Okie dokie, it's that time of the day. So, what we did on Monday is we simply looked at how ions combine to form ionic compounds uh, on Wednesday, we looked at how to take the names of ionic compounds and convert them to formulas. Today, we are going to take the formulas to the name. Now, with respect to the process, the first thing you should do is you should um, determine whether the cation always has the same charge or not. Because that's going to help you determine how to name it. So 
So with cations with the same charge, first of all, let me go uh, just discuss basics. When naming, the cation is listed first. in the name, followed by the anion. Now, part B, if the cation always has the same charge, Then you name the cation, name the anion, and you are done. But if the cation does not always have the same charge. Then you name the metal. You give the Roman numeral of the metal, or the give the charge of the metal. As a Roman numeral. And then you name the anion. Of this, it is this part right here that is the most challenging, is figuring out what that Roman numeral should be. Now, once you get going, you won't have to use this formula. But until you are confident, you can use the following formula. The Roman numeral will equal the number of cations times some variable, you can call it Z if you want, Y, X, whatever but times a variable. Minus the number of anions. Ew. Times their magnitude. That's the numerical value is what I call the magnitude. It's just the number. Like we've done that cross drop. We just cross dropped the number. When I'm talking about the magnitude, I'm talking just the number here in that charge. Yes. Just a variable. So if we're looking at it, this is just a variable, doesn't matter what. And this is just the number of the charge. So it doesn't include the sign.
So now all we're going to do today is look at examples. So let me come up with some like I did the other day. I'll come up with six at a time and then I'll walk you through some, well, I'll come up with four and then I'll walk you through them, come up with another six and so on and so forth. Okay, step number one I said is to figure out if the metal always has the same charge. So, does sodium always have the same charge? Yes, it's in group one, it's always a plus one. So I'm gonna just call it a constant right now, or const just to make it easier. Does palladium always have the same charge? It's element 46. Nope. Does calcium always have the same charge? It's element 20. Yes, because it is in group number two, which is a constant. It's always plus two. And does zinc always have its same charge? It's in the stair step, it's in group uh, number 30. Yes. So going back, if you look at what I said, if it has a constant charge, always has the same charge, then you simply name the metal Name the anion, you're done. So I'm gonna name the metal, this is sodium. I'm gonna name the anion, well, oxygen as an anion is called what? I heard it, oxide. So that folks is sodium oxide. I'm gonna skip palladium for the moment because I'm gonna do all the ones that have a constant charge. Calcium had a constant charge, so I'm gonna name the metal. And I'm gonna name the anion. What is OH anion? I heard it. Hydroxide. So that's calcium hydroxide. Zinc always has the same charge. So I'm gonna name the metal and I'm gonna name the anion. What is PO4? Phosphate. So that's zinc phosphate. Now I gotta deal with palladium. Because a subscript is not shown, that means that there is one palladium. Palladium is the charge we do not know, so I'm gonna label it as Z. Oxygen, what is oxygen's charge as an anion? Negative. 
negative two. So if I'm looking at the equation I gave you, my Roman numeral is going to equal one times Z minus two times two. So that is going to be Z minus four. So the Roman numeral has to, uh, Z has to equal four. Because this has to be charge neutral. So instead of an REN, that yes, that's how we're calculating the REN, but because this thing has to be charge neutral, you can set that equation equal to zero and solve for Z. So this is going to be palladium. And our Roman numeral has to be the Roman numeral for four, which is IV. And then you name the anion, which is oxide. That's not a two, that's a Z. Maybe I'll put a little line in there so it doesn't look like a two, I don't know. You can use any variable you want. Okay, questions? Yes. That is correct. It's a metal that is in that is not in the staircase and not group one, not group two. There are constants. Is it the same with a 13, 15? No, uh, I mean, they're an the anions of, in 15 through 17 are, yes. 13, 14, 14, 14. We'll see, okay. So, for 13, Aluminum, gallium, and indium are constants because they're part of that stair step. But if it's a metal and it's not in the stair step, then it is not constant. So tin, for example, is a metal because it, it, remember here and here are your metalloids. Everything to the left of the metalloids are metal. So tin is a metal, but since it's not in the stair step, it's not constant. Lead is a metal, since it's not in the stair step, it's not constant. Does that answer your question? Yes. So what I was asking is basically somebody from the ones for the metalloids. Well, we have to get a question where the metalloids, like, you can put a metalloid. Metalloids don't act like metals, so they can't be cations. They can only be anions. And so as an anion, their charge is always the same. That's a negative one, that's a negative two, that's a negative three. For the metalloids and non-metalloids. Boron doesn't have a charge. It won't be ionic. Either will carbon or something else. They'll only make, they'll only be part of an ionic compound if they're part of a polyatomic ion. Otherwise, they, these three don't make ions 
at all. Okay, let's look at some more. So let's see. There's three, uh, there's six to work on. And Luna and I can walk around. Yes, you heard your name. Walk around. So sulfate is a minus two. The entire SO4 is a minus two. So since there's five of them, that makes that minus ten. Thank you. 
Back to your beds. Okay, first of all, phosphate is PO4. So the entire PO4 is a minus three. There isn't four oxygen. So in other words, that subscript is not counted into the calculation because it's PO4 is the entire thing. So there's just one PO4 there.
Oops. Okay, questions. Yes. Niobium. Actually, I did. Um, so Oh, you don't have to show it if you don't need it. So technically, okay, let's, since Z confused people, I'll use Y. Again, it's just a variable. And my sulfate is a minus two. So I have zero is equal to two times Y minus five times two. So zero is equal to two y minus 10, two y equals 10, therefore y equals five. Yes. Okay, so manganese is a Y. There's one of them. C2O4 is a two minus. So there is one times Y. Minus three times two. So zero is equal to y minus six. Y has to equal a plus six. Questions? Keep them coming because you got to be able to do this. Oxalate is one of those you just need to know. There's not, I could not give you a uh, hint, I guess, to memorize them. Yes, C204 is always a two minus charge. As long as it's an ion. Some of them it does just take memorization. Any other questions? Let's look at some more.
That's supposed to be a Y. Let me try to fix it. I was afraid it wouldn't look right. Y I three. Yes. Mm -hmm. It that is correct. It would be. No, it would be different. It's not bromate. Because 
it is in parentheses. Yes. How does all that like others? What do you mean? It's still similar. You don't have to if you uh, get the method. So there's still one iron times Y. There is one sulfur times a negative two. So it would be uh, for those that don't are still curious, it would be one times y mi uh, minus one times two. Or in other words, it's zero is equal to y minus two. So y has to equal two. Other questions? Yes. So <laughs> there's one yttrium times y. There's three iodides. Iodide is in period, is in group 17. So that's a minus one. Zero is equal to one times y minus three times one. So zero is equal to y minus three. Y has to equal three. Other questions? The hardest part so basically we've gone over ionic compounds. We will start naming covalent molecules on, that are uh, considered to be inorganic covalent molecules on Monday. Um, the hardest part is that on an exam, they're not separated. So I don't tell you to go from the formula of an ionic compound to the name. 
I don't tell you to go from the name of the ionic compound to the formula. They're gonna be all mixed together. You gotta to know what to do when. Now, I was thinking about your test last night. And you're gonna to have to know what you're gonna, what you're doing. The reason for that is because when it comes down to a formula for a compound or ion, or the name of a compound, or the name of a polyatomic ion, or the name of an ion, it's either right or it's wrong. There's no partial credit to be given. There is no partial credit I can find to even give. So your tests are out of 150 points. Thinking about how to minimize the, the result. If I give you 30 problems, they're worth five points a piece of right or wrong. So you miss three and you're in the B. If I give you 60 problems, that means you really have to know what you're doing because it's basically a little less than one a minute. I mean, a little, it's less than one a minute that you, I mean, more than one a minute that you have to really be thinking for it. But then there are two and a half points each. So I get, even though a third of the class isn't here, you get the decision. You get the deciding factor. Is the test going to be 30 point, 30 questions? at five points a piece, or is the test going to be 60 questions at two and a half points a piece? The questions will be, given this formula, give me the name. Given this name, give me the formula. It will be of ions. It will be of ionic compounds. It will be of covalent molecules that we discuss on Monday. I will not put the stuff we discuss on Wednesday on the test. I'll at least give you four, three days to try to get, three or four days, whatever it is, to try to get the uh, stuff down for the exam. But which is it going to be? Y'all get to talk about it and decide. Nope. I have two thirties. Yeah, the rest of the class gets to live with y'all's decision. Y'all talk. You got about a minute to talk. Speak up. Talk to each other, and then we'll decide. Or actually, no. Y'all think about it over the weekend, and you tell me on Monday. That way, y'all can decide after the weekend and studying some what you're ready for. And there will be a homework and a quiz as soon as I get back to my office. The quiz will not include what we went over today. Yes. You'll get your periodic table. And I will tell you on Monday which ions, which polyatomic ions. I won't make you memorize all the polyatomic. That is normal. Oh, no, oh, no, I, oh, no. 
church. Huh? Next Friday? What? That we just did today? Yes, that will be on the exam along with what we do Monday. But it's not on the quiz that's today. Uh, what do you mean the notes? Are you talking about the video lectures? Or, or are you talking about the Zoom video? They are all combined into one big section. It was all in one. It wasn't divided out. Okay. So that be okay, never mind. Thank you. I will gladly do it, but I also know that there are some people that are here to do chemistry tutoring up in uh, the um, in the student uh, at the, blah, 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 the library up in the uh, tutoring center. I know they also have free tutoring and there are some of the tutors that I know can do it. So if you're struggling and want somebody, you'll come up to my office. I can probably look through the tutoring list and see who does it at least. Okay. Because I mean, I can do like Tuesdays. Those are better for me. And I don't know if there's like certain things. Tuesdays. I don't know their schedule, and my schedule, it always varies. That's why I have to give it to you on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. So we're talking October 3rd. Mm -hmm. um, I can do, so I'm in my office from, say, 1030 till 130, and mm -hmm. I can help out any time in there. Okay, I get out of my lab at 12. And so. then I have office hours at 230, 330 that day, so technically till 4. Right. Well, I get out of my lab at 12 and I can come over here and see you okay. and just talk through a little bit. Okay. Give me a little bit better understanding. Sounds good. Thank you. Uh, I have a question on the, what is it? The library? Atrium? Yeah, like, how did you, how was the charge once? And I'm like, how is the charge? I just don't know how to charge. Iodine is in group 17. It's element 53, so it's in group 17. Yep. All of the group 17s are negative one. Yeah, I know that, but like, what about That's in period three or group three? It is in group three, so I had to figure out what the charge for yttrium was. So you, it's a three. I mean, I put it for the, for the thing, I put it as two, I, I guess. Okay, so, you're gonna have to, so if you know the charge on the iodine as negative one, there are three of them. Yeah. So that's where this three times one came from. Oh. Atrium is unknown. So that's where this one times y came from. Yeah. So when you put this together, it's y minus three is, and so then you solve for y. And oh. so that's where that three comes from that's right there. So for the three times one, you just got the iodine? Like, yes. Like, so that is just for the from three times negative one, or three times one. I don't know what it was, but like I put two for a while. I got the same answer. I don't, you know. I don't know, but if there's not a number showing, it's always a one. Oh, it's always a one? Yes, you if there's know. no subscript, it means it's a one. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Shut down. No, you don't orphan anybody. What's your what's up, Sierra? I just have one question about that. So where did the hypo come from in bromide? Hypobromite B R O by itself, B R O is the polyatomic ion hypobromite. It's one of your polyatomics. Okay. And do you know where my office is? That's part of why this question. So let me shut down. <laughs>